The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It feels like it's better, it's better with you. My life, it's better, it's better with you. This is true, it's better, it's better with you. My life, it's better with you. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. And me? Well, I'm your middlest brother, Big Dog Wolf Wolf, Travis Wolf Wolf McElroy. Wolf Wolf. That was, I'm Griffin McElroy. That's a lot of business. I couldn't remember where the Wolf Wolves went, if I'm being yeah. honest. Yeah, just throw them in between every word. I yeah. ought to do it. Better say than sorry. Hey, sure. guys. Guys. Yeah. yeah. Guys, did you hear about the spice? The spice is nice. This this no, fall, that's not, um, what I was get, it must flow. Is I don't think at any oh. point in Dune do they say spice is nice. Mm, the, the spice, spice is, nice. is nice. Spice is nice. Give me that spice on some shaved ice because it's nice. I am, the spice uh, is nice. Y'all one. y'all have expressed interest in doing a Dune based introduction, yes. and I I must warn you that my knowledge of the the works. Uh, are not comprehensive. And so I might be able to hop in there from time to time and be like, those big worms, I bet there's people yes. on the internet uh, who that makes horny of them, um, which is like about the depths that I will be able to plumb with it. Like, the- oh, those big worms. You know, there's some people that see those and get horny of, of them. Here's what I just wanted to say about this one, mm. Dune. Now, I my sort of expertise in Dune is that I read the first quarter of the first book uh-huh. yeah. and said, this isn't for me. Boring. This bite <laughs> I didn't say boring. I didn't fucking say boring. Wow, I Justin, like that's, a, that that's a weird, that's a boring. combative thing. A lot of people really love Dune. And no, I want to talk about gross. the the director of the mo- movie, Denis Villa- Villeneuve, um, which is like already a little- Delectable, yeah. You know what I mean? He said- He's basically really mad that they're going to put Dune on TV. Mm. Oh, yeah. When it's also going to the movies. And I feel like this is a debate that we have not gotten to weigh in on. Yes. We haven't weighed in on this. Thank you. This well, one. let me and just. Dennis, Dennis, I hear you. And he doesn't want. Dennis doesn't want you to watch Dune on TV. If you show. He says it's not just a product. It's church. Right. Ooh, ooh, gross. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's what I he said like about that. AT. I don't go to church either, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what he said I go to a movie more than I go to church, Dennis. Dennis. Maybe church is the movies, you know? Mm. It's not church, it's movies. He wrote, he, this is what he said to Variety. He wrote an open letter about how Dune's on TV. And he said that AT&T hijacked one of the most respectable and important studios in film history. There's absolutely no love for cinema, nor the audience. The what he said watching a film on a TV screen is of lesser value. He said the way it happened, I'm still not happy. Frankly, <laughs> frankly, so I wasn't angry enough. Frankly, to watch Dune on a television, the best way I can compare it is to drive a speedboat in your bathtub. Whoa, that's awesome. Uh. That's what? cool. That's Dennis. That, don't make that, it sound so good. That sounds that, awesome, Dennis. The, I, 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 I would Dennis. say, uh, Dennis, the problem uh, with your metaphor there, or a simile, is that uh, a speedboat in your bathtub would not scale unless you're talking about a Stuart Little-esque situation yes. in which the bathtub is scaled down to the bathtub and I'm Stuart Little size. Because when I put Dune on TV, it's not going to be like super zoomed in on Oscar Isaac's nose, right? Like yeah. I'm going to be able to see the whole thing. But like, on the other hand, on the other hand, do not watch it on an IMAX. Here's the thing, folks. Dennis made these worms to be a specific big size. 
Yeah. When you watch the worms on your TV or Christ forbid it, your phone, <laughs> those worms look little. They look like little, That's like true. a snake that you could step on and hurt it. And you can't do that because the worm is too big. But on an IMAX screen, the people, that's way too big the worm is at that point. Yeah, like, I will say, no one's going to believe there's a worm that big. When I watch Dune on my tablet, I'm like, yes. why are those borrowers fighting that earthworm? Because I don't yes. understand scale The people in Zendaya are so small, so yeah, little. they're so little. Here's what I'll say to Dennis, though, that perhaps Dennis isn't considering. TVs these days is big. T- mm, they are TVs getting bigger. pretty big. I said, yeah. like, my TV... Pretty big. Now, if yeah. this was old school, where we had that one tube TV that I think in real life was like a 12-inch screen, but the box, like the, the case that it was in was like three feet wide, yeah. then yeah. like, yeah, I get it, Dennis. I don't want to watch fucking Timothy Chalamet's beautiful face on that tiny, <sighs> shitty black mirror. But on my big TV now, it's- That's getting it's, close, isn't it? It's pretty big. And I sit super close to it, Dennis. I'm yeah. right up on it. So the aspect ratio is about the same. Hold on, hold on, if we could pause for 30 seconds. I'm here with celebrity correspondent David Lynch. He just wanted to weigh in on this, Thanks. if okay. possible. Now, if you're playing the movie on a telephone, you will never in a trillion years experience the film. You'll think you have experienced it, but you'll be <clears throat> cheated. It's a, such a sadness that you think you've seen a film on your fucking telephone. <laughs> Get real. Okay, so that's sort of where Dave's at. Thank yeah. you, David, for coming into the studio with that. I really appreciate it. I'm going to completely miss the point for a second and say that my favorite moment in there is when you can hear him start to think to say billion, but then he's like, no, nah, no, 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 David, no, David, no. David. Trillion, no, trillion years. That'll get the point across. <sighs> Timothy Chalamet's not a big dude. He could sure. get, you could lose him in the action on the phone. I haven't seen the Dune film because it's not out yet. Um, and f- frankly, I they got it right with the Sting. Ver- like they got it in one with Sting and fucking Agent Dale Cooper. Like, yeah, yeah you're yeah, not yeah. going to beat that, but good luck. But on a phone, Timothy Chalamet, where is he? He is two pixels tall. I do not see the boy. I do not. I cannot I do not find the, the boy. boy. Although it is the most uh, I've ever felt capable that I could take Jason Momoa in a fight. Like I think okay. I could flick him across the table like Look a paper football. Bing. Bing. Angry Birds. Angry Birds. Aquaman's ass. Yeah. Right out the Bing. phone. Get out of here. Bing. Get out of here. <laughs> now you're in the yard. I and win. This is true because when you see the old version of Dune on screen, I'm like, oh, Patrick Stewart looks gigantic, right? Huge. Oh, look how huge he is. But then I go and I see Jason Momoa's ass. And that tiny ass phone, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, no, I could squish that boy, I could squish that man. Look at him, look at that. Travis could mama. swish, <laughs> he could swish. He could pick Jason Momoa up and swish him. Nothing but net. Oh, absolutely, no problem, no problem there. Absolutely, whatsoever. I could. Don't even get, don't even get it started. So <laughs> don't see if you see Dune on TV. If you see Dune on TV, take Dennis. yourself to jail. Unless your, admit yourself to, to jail. Unless, unless unless you string a bunch of TVs together like in blank check the movie and cool. you can watch it. Oh, that's awesome. Like a big get a bunch of friends together and land party your TVs together. That's and good. And then just watch it. So watch each TV Dune. is one chunk of Timothy Chalamet's face. Right, yes. and and decide ahead of time which part of which TV is going to be the face, because you don't want everybody to be like the nose or something. That would be so embarrassing, right? You want to yeah. be like, I'm the nose, you guys are the eyes. Let's vulture on this shit and get Timothy Chalamet's face up on the yep. big screen like Dennis intended. And I'm just gonna say, I'm I've been this is like not relevant to me because I've been boycotting the movie. You guys know since they announced that Stellan Skarsgård was going to play Baron Harkonnen and not Mike Myers. Like I've yes. been requesting yeah, yeah. for. <laughs> So many years. <laughs> Absolutely. I wanted Mike Myers to play all the parts, but. But they wouldn't. They said he, I was turned I just, but have you tried saying out loud, selling scars, scars, scars? Yeah. Lord. I'm going to bring my screaming four month old and four year old to the theaters. Yes. And everybody's going to be like, why did you bring these fucking kids to Dune? I'll be like, Dennis made me. I yeah. wanted to watch it at home, like a like a, a a normal person. But apparently, this is a Christ-like experience. I just hope there's enough fucking. 
I just hope there's enough Stellan in there to satisfy my kids. I don't want yeah. it to be another another situation like like Jungle Cruise where they got Giamatti right at the beginning and then Giamatti <laughs> disappears for large swaths. That's all they this is talk yeah. About. This is what I was saying, Justin. I'm still glad that you brought Jungle Cruise back into it because I watched Jungle Cruise at home and I can't imagine how much harder I would have cried if I saw it in theaters. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm kind of yeah, glad yeah. Yes. that I'm able to sit at home and have a muted emotional experience because God knows sometimes you know the the waterworks they just open and by the end of it you're dried out uh like spongebob in the sun and right. i don't want that you know what i mean so like and it's nice to be able to mute my emotions in watching say a jungle cruise right. or uh, a, a dune at home because the spice must flow but so must the tears the tears mm. must also and i like that's the thing about home viewing that you're not gonna beat dennis when i watched chernobyl Mm-hmm. At home with my kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, who's that great guy? I was like, that is that is Stellan Skarsgård. And then, like happens in so many movies, he was gone for yep. a long time. He wasn't on the screen. I could fast forward to the next scene. Yeah, yeah. And that, well, that's uh, in the, the special feature. So you can just watch this, the Skarsgård scene. They got scene. the sing-along, the sing-along Skarsgård cut. Yeah, for sure. They, just, they call it the Scar-rated version. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. That was 10 uh, minutes. We're free. All right. We did it. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, <laughs> we are going to answer your questions now and turn them alchemy like into wisdom. That's what we do. This is our core competency. Well, it's our, it's our, it's our USP mm. unique selling point. Okay. Advice. All right. No other podcast has done it. And well, no other podcast will ever do it. Okay. No, well, because nobody has a fucking gun. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm, so, I'm just really, it's been a while. You sound amped so, up. I'm fucking yeah, you're stoked. It's, this is the thing. We switched to the morning record. Yeah. And now I'm so jized on coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whew. I work at a local deli that also serves ice cream. Even that's evocative. You know, I, sure. A thousand things I could say already. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's used in a lot deli of the cow. And I like listen to like listen, like, um, you think they have a bologna flavored ice cream over here? Awesome. Mm. Come on. I've heard Kick of ass. creamed beef, but this Travis, is Travis, ridiculous. Don't, don't, come on. Travis. Travis, you're doing great stuff over there, but ju- you know Justin's on fire right I now. I need to give Justin <laughs> room to bust a move. You're right. You're right you're I know. Right. Get out of the way. Listen, when MJ's on fire, you give him the basketball or the microphone, depending on which MJ you're, you're talking, talking about. You're discussing it. Yeah. Now, Justin? Yeah. Do some or, of this. or the gun to shoot zombies if it's me launch. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Give me uh, one more, Justin, but make it more focused on the ice cream and less on the bologna. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know what I like is a nice uh, lox and then a schmear of uh, uh, Neapolitan. It's oh, that's smooth. Yeah, that's perfect. Shit. It's yeah. gone. Fuck. I work at a local deli that also serves ice cream. Nice. I was uh, helping out behind the ice cream counter yesterday. And while talking to my coworker about milkshakes, I mentioned that I'm not the best person to talk to because I'm lactose intolerant. Without missing a beat, he said, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> That's great. I, of course, asked what he meant, and he was immediately told me, I don't know, you just look like you don't do dairy. Was this an insult? Yes. How do I make myself naturally look like I not only can eat, but frequently consume milk? That's from Befuddled in Bellingham. Why would you want that? Why do you want a milk? Milk is poisoned on your body. Why do you want that? No, Griffin, because you see, there's some people that have been picking on me, but I've been drinking my milk, and pretty soon, I'm going to be a big tough guy, and I'm going to murder all of them. I don't remember how the commercial goes, but it was basically something like that. It was something like that, yeah. It was a little boy with a milk mustache saying, the day of reckoning is coming. (laughs) But that boy, Travis, you bleed for your sins, you monster. You've missed an important sentence in this thing, which is that they are lactose intolerant. So, like, if I'm at... A party, and somebody's like, Ch- Griffin, you haven't even looked at the cheese ball. And then I'm going to have to say, well, yeah, because it'll make me fart and shit weird. And I- I'll seem like a total creepazoid. I would rather just avoid that entirely no, by no, having no, people no. just Griffin, assume that about me. You're missing the point. The question asker is not asking, how do I make myself eat this food, which is poison to my guts? Yeah. It is, how do I make myself up here? to be someone who eats this food that is poison in my guts so that I might pass without trace throughout society. So that people, you're, okay, Travis, this is an intractable position that we have found ourselves in. Because I am saying, if you give that off, but you can't, if you're writing those checks, 
People are going to tell you to cash them. And when they tell you to cash them, you will have to say, I can't because of what it does to my stomach and my butt and the toilet. Oh my God, Griffin, you're missing the most obvious answer. Become an expert at sleight of hand. Okay. They make milk disappear. Down like you make the newspaper yes, cone. Right. Make the newspaper cone and dump it in and then the stubs. But in this case, the newspaper cone is your mouth. Okay. When the, when the magic guys do the trick where they pour the milk down the newspaper cone uh -huh. and then it's gone, yeah. that's making a mess somewhere, right? In right. a different dimension, yeah. I mean, j joke's out of the room. There's not, they're not pouring it into a fucking wormhole. Like, they're pouring milk what? into a newspaper so, cone. Let, let's, say, let's put it this way. <laughs> let's put it this way. When the magician pour the milk into the newspaper cone and then you make it disappear, yeah. someone... We'll be cleaning that up. <laughs> yeah. Who will not at the end receive applause? There Let's is, put it that way. When they're doing their stage show, there is a a techie. There is some kind of theater professional standing off of the wings, going, "Don't do the milk. Don't do the milk. Don't do the milk. Don't Please do the milk. Oh, I have one more trick for you. No! I don't want to. I hope no one thinks I'm milking it. <laughs> yeah." Want, Motherfucker! It's, it's like in the Prestige when Michael Caine revealed, like, no, we we straight up murder a bird like every single <laughs> every night. Every single night. This is that. Somebody's like, damn, where does the milk go though? And you're like, hee hee hee. And you Someone point on stage the like, stain on the floor. I'm sweeping up the birds. Ugh. Um It's a yeah, living. I, I don't I I I would not want this. I don't I don't know why you want this. It's not most people I feel like aren't doing milk these days, huh? I think that mm. the problem is is that I think that lactose intolerant makes it seem like a weakness instead of like saying like, oh no, my body rejects that point. Like I, the, I think it needs a rebranding is what it is. Rather than like, I can't drink milk. My body has evolved beyond the need for milk. Mm. Right, yeah, I think we need, some, we need something that makes it more like, oh, you're not lactose intolerant? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. It's, but it's like, this is not a judgment on people who are still rocking that dairy life. Go for it. Stand on your truth. I'm, I'm proud of you. But there's so much stuff you can eat. No one's going to come up to you and be like, you don't eat the cheese and milk? And you're like, no, nah, there's other stuff. There's like lots of stuff that you can eat. There's lots of stuff you can eat. That's a, actually a great point, Griff. Thanks, Juice. Especially at the deli. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Can we approach the wizard? Can we yes. approach his humble mighty, yourself? His I've actually throne. been practicing a little dance for the wizard. Um, Do your dance. I'm gonna genuflect and let's all so appease so the back. wizard of the cloud. Big finish. <sighs> Why did you nice. get that tired? Because it was uh, you didn't physical. do that much. Well, I'm really out of shape, Griffin. So I want to tell you all how to get out of a sticky situation. I think we've all been in from time to time. Too much honey? Um, no, no. Um, you're out in the desert. Yeah. And you're riding on your camel. Yep. Looking for the mummy's crypt. Sure, sure, sure. To get the golden treasure. I'm with Brendan Fraser it. and Rachel Weiss. Brendan Fraser's there. But then, uh, uh, you know, Brendan Fraser sees a, sees a bad mummy and shoots it. With his gun that gun. kills mummies. Oh, and it, okay. And and when that happens, it's loud, right? And your camel goes, "Fuck this! I'm scared." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to read to y'all how to regain control of a spooked camel. Oh, Holland great, great, great. sent this in. Thank you, Holland. Um, just to quickly like sort of summarize a lot of the things that I'm going to say here. Be just be chill about it. Yeah. Because if you're yeah. not chill. Your camel's gonna know that it can also be not chill and get and get and sort of wild out. A hey Griffin, bit. if I could just ask a uh, favor, yeah. if you could get to the point, this is actually very timely for me. Um, oh shit! Okay, yeah. Uh, so like, wow. this is actually yeah. a, a a going concern right now. Right. So. Okay. C camels are very intuitive creatures. If they sense your anxiety or anger, they will get more spooked. Your anger. Fuck you, camel. Okay, Stand wait. still. Um, it's important you. to manage your emotions, even if you're scared out of your mind. So focus on your breathing. Some people find that breathing in quick, quickly and exhaling slowly helps them feel calmer. Huh. Other people find that breathing in and out on counts of three helps. That's, so you've given me nothing here. <laughs> what would you have me do then? Which of those, those are two different things. 
Hey, yeah. but Travis, listen, remember, camels, they are calm by nature. They're not naughty by nature, like a lot of... <laughs> Sorry, I passed <laughs> like out. A lot of the, the animals of God's, God's domain. Like a lot of un, un, undulates. Un, ungulate. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, it, it will eventually regain its composure. You just When you're in the shit, remember you're not always going to be in there because the camel wants to calm down, right? Mm, well, Talk not to the camels. This, not this one. Reggie is kind of going, uh, he's wilding out. He is now, Travis, but he wants to be calm. So talk to the camel softly. Don't ever raise your voice at it. Reggie, hey, Reggie. you've trampled. Reggie, you've trampled my child. Please, Reggie, you destroyed stop. this bazaar that we found ourselves in. If you could just if chill out, this just, is a lot of money please. you're going to cost me. Um, I just want to see if there really is water inside of your hump because yeah. I find myself really thirsty. Oh, that's number four. Don't poke a don't poke a straw into its hump trying to drink it up like a Capri Sun. It says right here. Because hey, it says that has stop, never worked. Stop drinking that Mountain Dew Co. Red, Reggie. You gotta calm down, buddy. You, you, you've got gamer. You've got gamer you've energy. You've got the gamer right madness, now. and you can't get. You can't expunge that because you can't game. You gotta. Don't you kick gotta or hurt the camel down. as an attempt to slow it down. I would never. If you want the camel to trust you, he has to look at you like a friend, not an enemy. I mean, uh, but I'm I need. The, but here's the, I don't. Do I need that the to camel a lot of my to my friends. I need the camel to respect me. Like, I'm not going to hurt or kick the camel, but the idea that I'm its friend, like, you can't be a friend and Jesus. a father to your camel. You know what I mean? Sometimes I arm wrestle Reggie just to remind him that like, like, he I'm has in charge. to know. Yeah. Maintain a firm grip on the reins, but don't pull too hard. Just pull the normal. It's for camels. For camels. Reins the normal pulling amount. amount. They don't give a number. How much torque do I need to use? It's so hard to not err on the side of pulling too hard because there's definitely a not too hard amount that I could hold it. Yeah. That I'm going to find myself negative one camel. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, not only that, if we're trying to earn this camel's respect, then I give it a loose, like, boop. And it's like, what was that? What was that? That was nothing. Yeah. I, you got to just be. You just got to be consistent. I feel like I was thinking about if my camel ran away, it would really, there's a level of exoticness. Is that? Yeah. yeah. Exoticity. There it is. There's a level of exoticity of an animal where owning that animal becomes your core defined. Like, if yeah, when you're the to, boa constrictor person or the it, it, parrot person. I see, I feel like even a boa constrictor is like right on the line of like if someone says you should meet my friend Dan, it would be the first thing. Here's what you got to know about Dan. He owns a camel. I mean, I guess <laughs> yeah. probably depending on your locale, though, because there would be points where sure. he's like, sure, this of is course, Dan. Yes. He doesn't own a camel. And you'd be but like, there's whoa. A, there's a commiserate. There's a there's a commiserate level of like there's a, a animal animal that is as exotic yeah in camel fearing nations as it would be here. Do you, you understand? Say what camel I'm saying? fearing or camel fearing? I heard fearing. I heard fearing also, which is like what nation is that? That's like oh, the camel, get out! Go, it's a camel. He's coming. Ah! Try to get the camel moving in a circle. All right, you gotta you gotta stunt that camel. You gotta let the camel have a little bit of fun by stunting it in a cool circle. How long you do you just, think? I don't know how smart camels are, but wicked if, smart. If my camel got away from me, how far do you think it would get before it was like, "Oh shit, I don't know where I'm going." Yeah, I need to go back to Travis, <laughs> or I'm gonna die out here. <laughs> now, now while you're stunting in the sun, uh, doing doing donuts on your camel, <laughs> this next step is pretty important. Try to remain saddled until the camel stops. If you get it to circle, yeah. you must hang on and let it run. And hang on for the fucking ride of your life. Why did yeah. I do this? Oh, no. <laughs> no, not the ramp. You've got to get your center of gravity low and grip it with your legs and just fucking close your eyes. Pray to well, whatever God you believe in and just, just see what happens next. I we can't don't imagine it's that hard, though, because you just put yourself between the two humps. That's exactly what I was about to say, Travis. It's so funny you say that because I feel like camel is the any sort of dromedary would be the most embarrassing to fall off of yes. because they have a human divot it's all right there grip. part of the grand design yeah perfect perfect, perfect creatures divot. Perfect um human size divot. so re remain saddled until the camel stops unless consider a quick dismount if all else fails bye <laughs> <laughs> sorry hey your camel just trampled like my family yeah sorry he was going too fast 
Did you pull on it the normal amount? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, just the regular amount. Not too you much. kicked it, no. right? No. No, oh, that was a trick. I was trying to get you with my trick. Damn, that's weird. Camels are usually so calm. I know. That's why I had to jump off. I don't like the vagueness of if all else fails. Mm-hmm. Because one of the steps was stay saddled, which then makes me think, is that one of the things that would fail at which point someone would be like, hey, I saw you fall off your camel and you go, no, 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 no. Yeah. I jumped off my camel because all else failed. All Everything else failed. L- real quick, part two, know what to do once you've regained control, which is assuming a lot. But you've gotten the camel to chill, you're off the camel, and you're not dead. One, get the camel, uh, get off the camel once you have it under control. Once the wild ride is over, have Mistake. the camel sit. Yeah. Mistake. You get oh, off really? and your camel's like, you fucking bought it. <laughs> and he's out. <laughs> Well, Charles, that's why you need to do step two. Keep a safe distance from your camel because, and this is a fun fact, unlike horses, camels can kick in all directions. What? Omnidirectional. Even straight up. Fucking awesome. They can kick straight up. They can kick God. Cloud (laughs) cloud kickers. So cool. Uh, Does one of the steps have a calm but like direct discussion with your camel about what the two of you could do better next time. Don't make it all about the camel. Use a lot of I statements. Travis, you're getting way ahead of me. Fuck me. Yeah. Step three is don't run away from the camel because if you turn your back <laughs> to the camel, it may chase after you and kick you Why? no matter which which away. No, there's nowhere you can hide from the camel's mini kicks. It adds Why would hoods. I run away to the camel once it's calmed down? Like, oh, the camel's calm. It's not wilding out anymore. Bye. Well, you, you know it's trying to fucking trick you and prank you. Mm, right, right, right. Uh, don't make any sharper sudden movements. Great, great, great. And then step five, and this is awesome. Try walking in a slow circle around your camel while talking to it calmly. I wish someone would do that to me sometime. I'm going to oh. ask my therapist next time I'm like really going <laughs> going bonkers in there to just like do a, do a lap while giving me some sort of like nice affirmations. That would be that would be very soothing to me. A little three sixty degree, uh, sin, sin surround experience. How about another question? Yeah. All right. So, we have time, right? Yeah, we right, do. Sure. I just I feel like this is the most helpful thing. Sometimes I like to end the episode on the most helpful thing, and yeah, okay. knowing that a camel can kick you no matter where you're at, even if yeah, you're like at home, three sixty <laughs> miles away, no, no matter what, yeah, the camel's gonna find you. I just want to say 360 no scope camel so I can move on with my fucking life. Okay, All right, let's it. go. 360 no scope. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't see. I can't even. I said it just then. I realized I already said it. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. My partner and I have been in the process of buying a house over the past couple of months. Congratulations. That's a stressful process. No kidding. And it hasn't been going too well. Oh, we shit. recently found out, found one that seems perfect for us. It's in our budget. It's nice outside. It's close to both of our jobs. The problem, the name of the road it's on is Brown Town. Where Should is Should I this? buy this place? They, did they say the city? I guess maybe they would You know be. I'm going to fucking drill down on this. Yeah, one. I know. What are you going to uh, search? Brown Town Road? road? <laughs> no, it's on Brown. T- the name of the road it's on is Brown Town. Should I buy this place? If I do, how can I get over the fact that I live on this street? This is from Rotten Realty. Please discuss this while I do a little Googling to see if I can find Brown Town. Uh, but we all want to look for Brown Town, Justin. Well, we can't. Some of us have to do a podcast, Travis. So Chattanooga. Okay, just, just right no bud, like right off the top of the the heap here, there's a Brown Town, Wisconsin, Brown Town, Virginia, Brown Town, which is in the Salisbury Township in Ohio. Oh man. There's like Brown Towns all over. There's Chattanooga, it, there's Battleboro, North Carolina, there's Atlanta, the, Georgia. The Brown Town of Wisconsin has, according to Google Maps, no reviews. So here's one. It's called Brown Town. That's hilarious. Oh just boy. Okay. Three stars. Here's Okay, I can't. There's a brown town road in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, in Virginia, also in Virginia. There's so there's like a lot okay. of. I, we're not going to dox this person. There's no. a lot of brown town roads. Here's the problem for me: is that there's a part of me that if like one of my friends, like if Justin, if you were like, "How do I get to my house?" and I was like, "Well, you just head on down to Brown Town." That's funny. But then someone goes, "Yeah, I got a package here. Where do I deliver it?" And then I have to say to that person with my human mouth, uh, yeah. "I need you to deliver it to Brown Town." I that that in that circumstance, I'm going to be embarrassed to tell people where I live. But there'll be other moments where I'd be super proud to, and I don't know if it balances out. Yeah. I don't think it does. I what if you just said Dookie Bird? 
every time you say it to someone, I mean, it's not, you will get inured to it. You know what I mean? Like you'll get inured to it, but then eventually like you're, you're what you're going to get tired of is every time you tell someone you're going to have to stop your entire life for 15 minutes to unpack. Yes. No. Yes. I'm used to it. No, it doesn't bother me. Yes. It's really called Brown town. No, it's just a regular road. Nothing weird. What if you started, regular stuff happens here? What if you started pronouncing it Brone Town? Hmm. What about Brony Town? Brony Town. That's Come another on, another good option. Because I don't think Brown Tone works the same, but Brone Town. The housing market being what it is, if you find a house that you can afford, that you like, and that you can get an offer in on and win the house in the game that we call houses. Um, and if it's on a street called Butthole, f- like f- Fart Lane, get it, get that house. Yeah, yeah. You probably it's, will have an easier time like petitioning the city to change just the name of the street on your block. Yeah, than you will finding another house in in this economy. In yeah. this economy, where do you live? I live on sixty nine Shitmouth Cul de Sac. All right. How I hear that's a great feet? neighborhood. It's a great neighborhood. Great school districts and uh, affordable pri- price per square foot. We're loving it over here. There is an HOA at the shit mouth yeah. called sack, but um, it's you can't. You know things are tough. I just bought a new house. Oh yeah, uh, where at? Right. Oh, it's on everyone on this street has explosive diarrhea constantly. <laughs> street. Oh, well, yeah, that's a long name. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to send mail. Because you got fitted up in that top little corner there, it's huh? It's pretty hard, so I had to get uh, special like labels printed off. But they're yeah. lovely. They they have birds on them. It's nice. Yeah. Cardinals. Oh. That's fine. Hey, let's uh, take a quick break, and then we're going to come back with so much more, you won't even be able to handle it. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Honey is... Yeah, baby? Honey is a service that helps you find the best coupons on the internet. My brothers are so overwhelmed by Honey's great value proposition that they can't even string together a couple sentences about it. Yep. You know what I mean? You're on the you're on the internet. You're going to buy a hammer. You, the hammer is $100. You go to check out. God, this really hurts. But then Honey's like, don't spend $100 on a hammer. I, have, I scoured the entirety of the internet... I found a coupon code. The things I've seen. Oh boy. (laughs) Oh boy. Yeah. I wish I hadn't looked at the whole internet in retrospect. Hey, listen, honey (laughs) has been looking at the entire internet and it needs you now just as much as you need it. (laughs) It's been been finding coupon codes and a lot of other things. And it needs your help right now. It not only it wants to save you a few bucks on your hair in your very expensive hammer, but really it just could use a friend and maybe kind of a check. A reality check. It needs a reminder morals. that there's light out there. Yeah, it needs you to just bring it, just tug on the tether and bring Honey in for a Give it the kick. Struggle. Let it wake it's up for a second. Be, and Give Honey the kick. And it's not going to be right. It's seen things <laughs> you would not believe. It has seen sea beams glitter in the dark near the Tannhauser Gate and saved you 15% off of it. <laughs> Enough people are laughing at this to justify the fact that we won't be paid for it. <laughs> add, honey to your, add honey to your computer in seconds at joinhoney.com slash brother. That's joinhoney.com slash brother. We have had a lot of fun here, but honey has actually saved me a considerable it amount of money. It is wild. It's just fucking do it. It's wild that we have to. It's wild that anyone has to advertise honey. Yeah. You click it and then it saves you money on everything. It's, like, it's not a scam, people. It's good stuff. Joinhoney.com slash brother. I'll tell you what's no joke. Food waste. Because in 2019, 35% of the food supply went unsold or uneaten in the U.S. And that is, that's absolutely atrocious. What a waste. There's people out there that could use that. And we don't need to be throwing that stuff away. You know what I mean? Because with imperfect foods, you can get a grocery delivery that has, like, it's, Pantry tables, stuff like that, that just, you know, maybe they're a little dinged up, but they're still perfectly good. All you have to do is sign up, personalize your weekly order, and then shop online each week and get sustainable groceries that help you invest in a better food system delivered right to your front door. And 
unlike on-demand delivery companies, Imperfect delivers by neighborhood. It's a unique model that produces 25 to 75% fewer emissions than individual trips to the grocery store. Pretty great. I, I, what's not to like? You know what I mean? So right now, Imperfect Foods is offering our listeners 20% off your first four orders when you go to imperfectfoods.com and make sure to use promo code MYBROTHER, all one word. Again, it's 20% off your first four orders. That's up to an $80 value at imperfectfoods.com using promo code MYBROTHER. One more time, try Imperfect Foods now, and for a limited time, get 20% off your first four orders. Just go to imperfectfoods.com and use my brother, all one word, to sign up. Are you feeling elevated levels of anxiety? Do you quake uncontrollably, even thinking about watching cable news? Do you have disturbing nightmares, only to realize it's two in the afternoon and you're up? If you've experienced one or more of these symptoms, you may have FNO, news overload. Fortunately, there's treatment. Hi, I'm Dave Holmes, host of Troubled Waters. Troubled Waters helps fight FNO. That's because Troubled Waters stimulates your joy zone. On Troubled Waters, two comedians will battle one another for pop culture supremacy. So join me, Dave Holmes, for two, two, two doses of Troubled Waters a month. The cure for your... News Overload, available on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, boy. Ah. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Yum. I want to munch. What was that? That was bah, nasty. Bah, 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 bah. I want to dance, monkeys. I say munch. You say squat. I work for you. I want to munch. Squat. Hey, y'all. Man. <laughs> what just happened, Justin? <laughs> this one might be. I just. I don't know, man. No one's this making is, you do this, Justin. This one feels like I. it is making me do it, but it's like the Ouroboros. Like this, first off, public service announcement, the Chacaroni is back at Papa John's. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Go get your Chacaroni. It's a it's a gigantic, <laughs> it's a monstrous pepperoni pizza. One dollar of every purchase Shit. is goes to a uh, charity. It makes me um, so mad. It's not macaroni. I forgot it was a pizza. Sorry, go no, on. No, it's a Chacaroni. With cheese. So the chacaroni's back at Bobby Johnson. No, I want to tell you about... It's just really hard. This one's just hard. Take your time. Okay. Guys Flavortown Kitchen uh-huh. partners with lifestyle brand Middle Class Fancy to debut the Rand Burger. Huh? Okay. This is... Th- I I sadly understand this, and it is a okay. fucking wild, wild ride. So we're kind of in like yes, yes. We were in yes, <laughs> yes, no territory for sure. Yeah, because it's like I read it and, I, and I, I read it several times and my brain couldn't put the chunks together yeah. in much the same way as Guy. I have no idea what this is. Okay. Okay. Can I take a stab? Yeah, take a stab. It's like it's like an Instagram joke account that like makes fun of Guy Fieri sometimes. And but now Guy Fieri's like, no, nah, let's collab. Win, collab. Win now. Am I close? You're basically got it. Middle class fancy is like an Instagram account. You know what I mean? Where it does meme jokes. Yeah. Okay. And memes, um, are like jokes <clears throat> that s- you need to- remove punchlines and substitute it with images you're familiar with. Yeah. If you need it, if that's a meme, right? So there's all your vocab that you need here. The world's most memeable chef, Guy Fieri, is taking his Flavortown Kitchen, a delivery-only restaurant brand powered by virtual dining concepts, Jesus. to heights. What a what a food stew, or word stew. To new heights by partnering with the most iconic name in suburban meme culture, Middle Class Fancy. The partnership not only brings together two brands synonymous with memes, but also offers a new menu item, the Rand Burger. Now available for a limited time only. Okay, listen, 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 listen. I I'm I know that in this day and age, this is like an, a really like trite observation to make, but imagine taking this press release back in time, even just like thirty years, and handing this to a human being, 
and they would read it and be like, what if this is this is what is this? Did you cut up a bunch of words in a magazine and throw them into the air and this is how they land? Like none of this makes sense. I get except it. for the fact I that understand. no, I, uh, no, I listen, you get it because you understand individually yeah. what all these words mean. But without any context whatsoever, you could not put this together like sans context clues. This these words mean nothing on their own. Um, so middle so middle class fancy is a meme account for, from Instagram. And it does seem to credit people for their memes sometimes. I, I can't really give a definitive answer on that. But they do dunk on Guy Fieri. And Guy Fieri, I guess, loved the dunking so much that he wanted a collab. Millions of followers view middle class fancy's unique perspective on the absurdities of suburban lifestyle, from jokes about air fryers to grilling battles, integrating Guy Fieri's Flavor Town Kitchen into the middle class fancy universe, led Fieri to naming a burger after their beloved character, Rand. Like Ayn Rand? So this is yeah, so this is like the first burger that is also an inside joke. You know what I mean? I started Middle Class Fancy as an exaggerated version of the life I grew up around coming from a small town in Cedar Town, Georgia. It's a small town in Cedar Town, Georgia. That must be a pretty fucking small town. <laughs> it's like Safety Town. It's like Safety Town. I already had a different meme account where I put who I don't care about someone who is more successful than me because they post memes. I need to that's a shame because to... there's a lot of people you've just described. I know. I ruled out a lot of people, huh? Sorry, I prefer books by authors. Wait, so people After make about... money from posting memes? A huge part of middle class fancy universe involves the restaurant experience as well. I'm beyond excited to work with Guy, and I know my audience will love what we have in store for them. It's, I mean, it's a burger. Here's here's the here's the quote from Guy Fieri, and I know this one isn't funny. I'm really struggling with it. And I'm being honest about that, no. and that's worth something. It's vulnerable. Meme or no? Let me do my Guy Fieri voice. Yeah. Oh no. Meme or no meme? Rand is a real dude and a formidable grill master, says Guy Fieri. So in recognition of his true backyard burger badassery, I'm allowing Rand a limited time only trip through Flavor Town. Jesus. Order up. That your guy Fieri, Justin. Yeah. Scares the shit out of me. <laughs> What's wrong with him? We can we we have time. We can sort of zero in on Do him on again? It, Just say that again. Me or no me. Yeah, that's Rand's all right. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a he wants to fight me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are the, are the very least challenge my preconceptions? Do you not do you not get the impression that Guy Fieri wants to fight food a lot? Oh, fight food? Yeah, it, that's yeah. interesting. I don't want to take this ham Sammy out back and kick its balls. Yeah, that's cool. That I get. <laughs> that I get. If he said, "I want," I named this burger after. a I mean, the burger is named after a character on an Instagram meme feed. Yeah. What is happening? Well, it's 2021 and nothing means anything anymore. Well, no, this means something. This means something to me. Does it? Yeah. What's it That's mean fun. to you, Griffin? That's funny. When one funny thing does a funny thing with another funny thing, that's <laughs> good shit, man. Well, I mean, you can get it if you want to. You guys know about... You don't even need a restaurant to have a restaurant anymore. Guy fear that you get the idea like, like Flavor Town Kitchen. This is not a rest. This is not a building you can go to. You just tell Uber Eats you want it, and Guy Fieri ships it to you or something. Something like that. Is there a sure. hook? My favorite burger in Huntington. Yeah, is the Mr. Beast Burger, which is delivered via a YouTube account called Mr. Beast, and he started a bunch of burger places, hundreds. Throughout the U.S. Is he, That's the best burger in town. Is he, it's from this YouTube guy. Is he the one who gives people bunches of money and you watch Mr. it? Mr. Beast. And you think like, damn, this little dude's like a little publisher's clearinghouse. Look at this, this little, 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 Look at this little gentleman. Yeah, he goes place to place. Sometimes he gets hunted by the FBI. And if the FBI catches him, he gives him 10,000 10, smack what? Or 100 Gs. Yeah, okay. Does the FBI need money? Well, it's not the whole FBI. It's just one guy. So, and I have to imagine he's like a disgraced FBI agent, right? Because well, I can't imagine they let their best people do this. At some point. But maybe. I don't know. All right. That's that's it. I mean, it's like, I, this is why I'm saying, and this is why I'm struggling with it. Like, I, f 
you don't know if it's normal or not. It's not that I know if it's normal. It's like I feel like the we have crossed some sort of YouTube dividing line. What YouTube con? That could be it. It's like a it's like a dividing line where no, it's like more of like a we've broken the mimetic seal. So you the thing the fact that it is wild is the point. The cruelty is the point. You know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? It is why yes, that's right, it is wild. And that's why a lot of these products, they're not even like for sale in a wide reaching way. It's just like, yeah, we did a really stupid thing. What do you care about it? And that pushes you into a well and forces you to tweet about it or this something. This is the you thing I mean? we we have reached a point now where like the pendulum is going to swing back the other way. And pretty soon, like a big news story is going to be like McDonald's saying like, yeah, we're making a new burger and that's it. It's just a new burger and it has ingredients that we thought you would like. You how, the only you ca- human part of the fast, the casual dining industry anymore. The only human part is that there's everybody's doing a lot more plants. You can eat a lot of this, which seems good in my stupid opinion. You know, it seems good. Yeah. Plants. All right, that was so a, that was a ch- that was a challenging one. It's a challenging one, right? Because I don't know. I don't know. Is that worth reporting? Is that a news story for Munch Squad? I don't know because the it's the point. The that is the point. You know what I mean? I not, it's it not the like it's, exception anymore. It is the rule. That exactly. Yeah, Trav. I mean, yeah. It doesn't require a me to do it. Like, yeah. D- guy did his own Munch Squad kind of. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like. I, I'll take this from you too. I'll yeah. tell you what would be an exciting one squad is if you could find a press release that was like this meme account tried to get Guy Fieri to do a burger with him and Guy Fieri said, no, I'm not going to do that. That sounds too silly. I wish I could get, I mean, I've been try, we've been trying to get Guy on the show for years. We got to partner with him. Got to partner with him. Maybe that's it. Maybe if we had a great character, he could do a burger. My about. burger, my burger, and me. We All get right, two well, burgers. Okay, now you are now you are actually cooking with gas. You get two burgers and yourself. Um, that's it. Uh, it sounded like I would get three burgers. Nope, yeah, no, that's no, part of our. No, no, no. <laughs> that's how we get you. <laughs> our marketing trick. You're the me. Just two burgers. You're the me. It's my burger, my You're burger, me, and, it. and you have to eat both of them while guy watches. I got an idea for a new hot dog. Oh, called, really? Yeah, called Stink Dogs. Get at me, guy. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. Oh, unless you I like reach that. I like that. Like... Unless you make the con- the connection. I have a new idea for a hot dog called a not dog. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and tell you what it is. It's an empty bun. All right. Do you get it? It's good. You can put whatever you want in there. It's your it's your uh, blue you can, sky. But not a hot dog. No. Speaking of, speaking of which, huh? I want to tell you guys. Yesterday I got hot dogs for dinner. Oh, ooh la la. Yeah, yeah thanks, right? And I go to hot dogs for dinner, and there was an extra hot dog. I was like, you know, we ha- we had the whole nine yards buns, the whole, the whole thing. thing. We ended up. I was cleaning up at the end of the night, right? Yeah. And I, I there's a bag of buns, yeah. and I went to go store it. My wife, uh huh, my wife had put the one leftover hot dog we had. Yeah. Into the one remaining bun that we had, yeah. and then wrapped it back up in the hot dog bun bag. Huh. Cool, and left it on the counter. I like that. Have you ever heard of anything more treacherous in your entire life? I mean, okay, if you're at an outdoor picnic and you have to protect it from the elements, but I'm imagining you don't got buzz buzz flies in your. Kitchen. Where does that fit into the like procedures of? food handling where like now you have this and I didn't know about it. That's just really important, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me it's a bun in a bag. There's one bun in the bag left. Time to store this with buns. That is yeah. I think that is the uh the cat because if if uh if it was my wife my wife thank you and she put the hot dog in the bun and then loudly announced I'm gonna wrap this up that right fine to let me know but it, you gotta let you gotta let Justin know. You gotta let Justin know. Uh, it's the on the counter that also bothers me because I feel the people of this world, uh, on on the whole, have way too they're too blasé about the old danger zone of of yes. food and uh, forty to one forty, folks. It's it's more than four hours. You gotta chuck it. 
you've just broken through the danger zone. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes even then, I feel personally is pushing it, <laughs> where if I've been at a party and it's been like two hours and I'm like, oh, we could just, oh, you know, nobody's picking at this anymore. Oh, if we could just go ahead and put this back in the old refrigerator. Oh, uh, this boy. Is, Travis, you've actually tied in beautifully to our next question. All right. I have a simple query today. What's the appropriate time to delete someone's contact information? I have some people from high school in my phone and old work contacts. How long without being in touch is it good enough to simply purge my phone of their existence? That's from Living on the Lamb. I have roughly 1,500 people. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I have an exact number. Okay, it's only 900 contacts in my contacts list. Wow. Because at some point, iCloud was like, hey, you want every single person you've ever received an email from to be added to your contacts, right? And sometimes you click through those contacts, it's like, oh, we didn't think you'd actually click on it. We don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, no, we got nothing. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we can't get a hold of this. This person's I, off the grid as far as we're concerned. Um, yeah, I have PR or, or uh, uh, HR from AOL. So if Ooh. I need to reach out to AOL HR to get something taken care of, uh, I can just knock that knock that right out. I, this weird thing happened at some point between Teresa and I, like sharing computers and backups of phones and being on like the same AT and T account. Somehow our phones have now melded, and all of her contacts are mixed with my contacts in my phone, and all of my contacts are mixed with her contacts in her phone, and so it's created this thing where I'll be searching for a number and a name will come up, and I'm like, "Who the fuck? I th I don't know this Eric person." And Trace is like, "Oh, that's a guy I went to high school with," and I'll look at it and think, "I should delete that," but then I won't. Because Man, what if I need I, to contact Eric? I, I, I have a, I have a, okay, there's an impulse to leave every contact on there. I get that. At the same time, though, every day you do that is another day you run the risk of accidentally pressing the dial button. We've, we've all done yep. it. Accidentally pressing the dial button. I think you delete it when you, if you were to call that person, would have absolutely no possible there are some people that are so removed from me in terms of be it like actual geographic space or time or life events yes. right yeah. where a call to them would be utterly unfathomable Here's my phone would instantly become a burner i'd have to put it into a hydraulic press and but this it. is There'd the this no is the problem back from to it. go back to like the age we live in right as the issue is that like, and maybe this is a very specific problem, but I don't think so, because more and more people are turning to internet content creation for a job, is that you run mm. the risk of a kid you go, went to high school with, right, who has your same phone number, like, you know, following your Instagram account where you post your art or listening to your podcast or whatever, and texting you like, I love the show, and you've deleted it, and it's just a random number, and you're like, thanks, fan. Oh, that's fan. a fucking nightmare. Yeah. And they're um, like, no, 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 we like, we're best friends for eight years. <laughs> I have Russ Frushtick in my contacts oh, list. Oh, you can delete that. Four, four separate times. What do I need? For, why does he have four cell phones? I have What's dad in my phone twice, and I, yeah. like two numbers, and I have to remember every time, like, which one's my real dad? I have Richard Garriott in my phone for some. I can text Richard Garriott right now and be like, let me get all up in heaven, dude. Take me to space. Take me to your wonderful castle, Rich. I'm trying to think of like what's a weird what's one I could get rid of. Let's see, is that because? Well, it's just sometimes I have numbers saved in my phone for like businesses yeah. that I don't go to. Like I don't know where it's just like well I checked this enough times that like it's just I'm just gonna save it, and then it's like well how often am I calling you know the Huntington Museum of Art? <laughs> you know I could probably get rid of that one. We can do another question. Okay. Uh ooh ooh. Ooh, this is a good one. This this was a good one. The local university has obtained a rare corpse flower, and I want to. This go sounds like the beginning of a murder mystery. Go on, and I want to go see it because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. But my girlfriend doesn't want to go with me because it will smell bad, like a corpse. Mm -hmm. How do I convince her to come experience this nasty blooming flower with me? That's from Noxious in Knoxville. Oh, I is that? It's weird to think that there are people in this world that when you're like, smell how bad this smells, that they're not like, okay, right? Like, yeah, that that's me. I was like, oh my God, it smells terrible. Does it? <laughs> like, it's, that's seeing, like, I've been at funeral homes where they had smelling salts and it's all I wanted. 
Oh, I've hit the smelly salts once. Oh, it's not, yeah, baby. It does not feel good. It's no. bad. No, but you got it. But you got to do it. You got like you got to know it. what the stink. You got to know what that stink is like. I don't like the smell of flowers, so Wait, this wouldn't really stress what? me out that much. The smell of flowers grosses me out. Why? Because it makes me. Because the. Because I have at some point, some part of my brain connected funerals and flowers, and that's where I'm at now. Wow! And I can't get out of it. That's where I'm at. That's what my brain. If I have fresh, people give me flowers, I want to cry. I hate. I I can't stand the smell of flowers. Really? Don't like them. I'm. Don't like them. I'll try this court flower, I guess, but maybe I could just rule the whole category out. Now, but you this, but trust me, like court flower. Maybe that would be what purges your system. Maybe I don't think I. I don't think so. <laughs> Um, you know, if some if somebody doesn't want to go do something stinky, I think you gotta respect it, you know? You're <sighs> that's a very legitimate we've gotten to where we're at as a species by respecting the desire to not smell stinky things. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times that's earth trying to tell you it's poison. I would also say that uh there is a good distance along the way of this journey that your girlfriend could accompany you right up to, but not including smelling the bad, bad, stinky flower that would yes. make it a day together. A right? fun day. Yeah, you don't need to share this experience if they don't. If if someone said, hey, Travis, there's a flower down at local university that smells like stinky old garbage juice that's been left out in the sun, come with it with me. I'd be like, uh, no, no, no. And they'd be like, oh, I thought we were friends. Let me augment that, though, just a little bit. Travis, there's an incredibly rare flower mm. that smells like stinky garbage juice that you will never get the chance again to smell. Down at the university. Come down. Oh, well, that's, you know I do that. I know. That's because, what I'm like, saying. Like, I want to eat durian fruit. And, like, that's the one thing that, like, that dude from Bizarre Foods is like, this is fucking gross. <laughs> I hate yeah. this shit. And I'm like, oh, I want to eat that nasty ass fruit. Yeah. If Andrew Zimmern hates it, I'll fucking chomp it. I'll, I want to be braver than him. I want to know that I'm the braver man. A ship in Harbor is safe. Go smell the fucking flower. It's awesome. This person already wants to smell the flower. They need to convince someone else to smell the flower. Okay, go smell the flower and be like, it kicked ass. You got nah, come. You, it. Didn't I smell it. Ass. I'm going to have to disagree with this one. All right. Because here's the thing. Whoa. If they, it, there is a chance now that that person goes up and smell it. And, and after like question asker has like goaded them on and cajoled them to do it. And then they smell it like, yeah, it was fucking awful. And I hate that that happened. Right, and now it's that thing. And then the next time you're like, "Hey, go do this thing with me. I'm going to uh, this weird Renaissance festival." And they're like, "I don't know that I want to go to that." You've lost all bargaining well, power. Uh, no, because if you say, "Come smell this stinky ass rotten corpse flower with me," and then you go, and they're like, "That smelled so bad," and you can say, "Like, yeah, I did say that." It's not like you're going saying, "Like, hey, we're going to go to the Renaissance fair and get overcharged for dry turkey." And um, and we're going to feel not confident in our costumes. And they'll be like, well, that's a, you are also not selling this very well. I go don't smell, know. Go smell the flower, man. Ship and Harbor. I don't think you should Ship make people harbor. smell things they don't want to smell. Okay. Ship and Harbor. Well, but you could also trade off and say, like, you smell this flower, and then I'll smell something you want me to smell. It would be kind of fun to be at a place where you could just loudly say P-U a lot. That is true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That'd be P. Fun. P yeah, and then people would be like, "That's exactly the reaction we're going for." Thank you so much. While you're waiting in line to smell it, just be like P U, and people are like, "You can already." We're outside the building, and you're like, "Yeah, it smells." You guys can't smell that. Ooh, stinky P U. This is. I actually, I have a similar feel. If somebody was like, "Hey, let's go to that butterfly garden exhibition," I'd be like, "No, thank you. That's no, no." I oh, not. that's the worst. Oh God, those things. Oh mm, boy, just like a bunch of killable yes. stuff. Also, I have a three year old, yes. so that's a that's just a. Morgue. I'm a big that's old just Shrek, a just trekking around, and the idea yeah. that yeah. I'm, just, I'm gonna sit Shrek, on it, Shrek I'm gonna step on it. it, I'm gonna inhale it. I'm going to, I don't know, move my hand too quickly and backhand a butterfly across the room while my four-year-old looks on? No, yeah. thank you. I'm just going to cause like a billion, billion, like, tsunamis on the other side of the planet, you know? Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. I've seen the Ashton Kutcher movie Butterfly Effect, Absolutely. where he goes to that butterfly c- uh, conservatory and he accidentally eats three butterflies and <laughs> a volcano erupts. And he turns into Butterfly Man. We've all yeah. seen the movie. That it's part's funny. That part's cool. I like yeah. when he's Butterfly Man. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. You can buy stuff at macquarymerch.com if you want to. Um, we'll have a, we don't have an exact date or anything set up yet, but we're going to do more uh, live shows, like virtually speaking. Um, if, so if you would come to those uh, events, they've all been really fun. Ask anybody who's come to them. It's not just really us saying it. They're great. No. They're, uh, yeah. they're they're great. In case you missed it along those same lines, uh, Teresa and I had to cancel the Dragon Con appearance. Uh, it, there's a lot of factors at play, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. Scared of big dragons. I mean, you can just say it. I don't know if anybody was planning on going just because we were going to be there, but I wanted to make sure you all knew we would not be attending this year. Uh, um, and hey, the full song and music video for My Life is Better with You from Montaigne is out. Uh, you can find it on the McElroy Family YouTube channel. It's a, it's a freaking delight. Uh, and we're so, so happy uh, to to have worked with Montaigne on that. I say that. Montaigne did like 99% of the work. We just made silly faces. I saw somebody describe it as like uh, the, the whole video just exudes dad energy, including Montaigne. And yeah, that just made four me dads having fun. Absolutely true. Uh, uh, go watch it. Yeah. Uh, I got a final Yahoo here. This one was sent in by uh, Lamper who uh, sent it in. Thank you, Lamper. It's from Yahoo Answers user um, Mo Rocca. Wow. Who, uh, yeah. Wow, big game. Yeah, Mo Rocca asks, uh, Mo Rocca asks, Mo, I, sorry, I'm Googling. I forgot who Mo Rocca was. Um, oh, okay. Can I do a CBS Sunday morning on Arby's? <laughs> <laughs> Joke everyone yep. <laughs> My name is Justin I'm McElroy. Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Bye. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.